is day four of Cavemus already. I do not know what is going on. What I do know is that this cardigan is tight this year. I can like, the buttons are like barely buttoned up. I need to lose some serious pork in the new year. <laughs> Today's video is off at the back of last year and it was a bit of an unexpected success last year. And so many of you really, really enjoyed this format. I thought it was only fair to do one this year. It is the type of video that takes the longest from start to finish because you have to think of something to paint, you have to paint it and obviously film it so you've got that footage to edit as well but then on top of that you've got to make up a story, make sure you're not plagiarising anything else and then you have to write that out, narrate that, get it to fit in with the painting, <laughs> add some sound effects if that's what you're going to do, and then you've got to edit all that together. So it is a huge amount of work, but it's one of those things because we don't do it very often, I actually find it very, very enjoyable. And some of you will know that before I took up art, I used to write. So stories are kind of, uh, they come quite easy to me. So I don't know how you're going to take this one today, but I really hope you enjoy this little story. And I hope it's something you can put on in the background, maybe while you're doing festive things or making preparations, or maybe you're celebrating your Christmas today and it's something you can sit and plonk your kids in front of, because it is a little story, obviously. Um, I just hope that you enjoy it and you can uh, take this as a more sort of relaxed video. And I'm pretty sure you're going to recognise the artwork in it as well when we get started. So enjoy today, guys. Thanks again for coming and watching on another day of Cavemus. Handley was ugly. He knew that. He could tell by the way that people looked at him when he made the occasional trip into the village. But then again, he was a troll, so he really was supposed to be. He was also supposed to be stupid. Handley knew he was not. It was one of those very trips that Handley was on, just a few miles walk through the trees. He loped along, his footprints leaving a very different pattern in the snow from all the others. He was cradling two dozen freshly caught fish in his long arms. The lady in the local shop with the sing-song voice, he'd learned her name was Ethel, would trade with him for some paraffin for his old lamp, some fresh fruit and the occasional paperback. Handley loved the books the most after teaching himself to read. He loved seeing other worlds and being other characters. It took a long time to learn to read. He reckoned he was probably the only troll in the land who could. Then again, he thought he was probably the only troll. For some reason, Ethel didn't stare at Handley the way the others did and spoke to him like the other customers. If she was scared of him, she never showed it. Handley had been around a lot longer than the village and most locals knew that he was harmless. It was more his size and ugliness that made people cross the street. Well, the fishy smell from an almost exclusive diet might also have something to do with it too. He stooped under the low doorway of the shop and was greeted by a beaming Ethel. She always seemed so happy. Handley, so lovely to see you. And what's this? Oh my, what a lot of fish. Everyone in the village will be delighted to have some fresh fish for dinner. Lots of people have family and friends over at this time of year, you know. Handley looked down sheepishly at his fish. He didn't have any family and wondered what it would be like to share a fish with someone. He thought he might like that. The humans celebrated in the winter by hanging lights on trees, going to church and eating lots of food, giving gifts and uh, singing. He didn't really understand why, but he had learned about something called Chris Mass over the years and it seemed to be a time when everyone was together. Ethel appeared from the other side of the counter with two large buckets. Pop them in there then, I'll get them chilled down. Normally they would have been kept in a refrigerator, but at this time of year, Ethel covered the buckets in cling film and buried them in the snow outside. Handley thought she just did this for fun. Waddling away with the buckets, she shouted over her shoulder to Handley, help yourself to a book or two. Later, Handley walked along the road with his barter for the day. He only used a little paraffin at night to read and Ethel had given him enough to last a week or two. Alongside two bananas, an apple and a bunch of grapes, 
Handley had also procured a book depicting a great merry feast on the cover. He imagined that this is what humans' Christmas dinner looked like. He should have been happy with his haul, but a sad, cold feeling seemed to be preventing him from being triumphant. The afternoon light was starting to fade, and it had been snowing for some time. As he made his way along through the village, he stopped to peer into windows. Warm lights, open fires, humans hugging, playing, some of them just sitting. Handley sighed. The tree lights looked so pretty and they cheered him up a little. Maybe he needed some lights too. Ethel was shutting up the village shop for the day and had stepped outside to pull the shutters down. In the late afternoon gloom, the large misshapen silhouette of Handley cut a lonely figure. She realised he was staring at the village Christmas tree. She saw the way people looked at him and avoided him. She knew trolls lived for over a hundred years and the elders in the village remember him as children. Ethel wondered how many Christmases Handley had seen and how many of those he had been on his own. Sighing, she hauled the metal shutter over the window and crunched her way back inside. Handley realised it was getting dark so picked up the pace at the edge of the village. The street was empty, apart from an old man who seemed to be peering into the post box. Handley needed to get through the forest before it got too dark. He needed to get home. As he stalked along, leaving the lights of the village behind him, he felt like he was being watched. He thought nothing of it. He was used to people staring at him after all. Home for Handley was under a large stone bridge on the other side of the woods. Part of the stonework had come away underneath and he had fashioned a cave out of it by burrowing into the embankment a little. Many of the rumours about trolls were fallacy, but the bridge theory was true. A stone bridge was preferable to wood, less noisy, much better shelter. His was beautiful. Well, by troll standards. He lit the fire in the little circle of stones just outside the edge of the cave and safely tucked away the paraffin for reading later on. Dining on an ample meal of fish and fruit, he thought again about the tree lights and the activity in the village. Everyone seemed to have someone. Handley, he didn't have anyone. What would it be like to spend this time of year with others? He didn't fancy the idea of having to be around others all the time. That sort of thing wouldn't do for a troll. But what if, just for once, he could while away one of the long dark winter nights maybe sharing some food and laughing like the others. A scuttling noise pulled Handley from his thoughts. In the flickering firelight, a tumble of powdery snow rolled down the embankment and deposited a snow-covered squirrel in a heap in front of the cave. You all right? Oof, said the snow squirrel. Handley scooped up the squirrel and dusted it off gently with a long index finger. What are you doing hanging about in my bridge? I, I lost my family. Our tree was cut down, my family fled, and I've been looking for them ever since. I saw your fire last night and you coming back with fruit today. I'm so terribly cold and hungry and I thought if I could climb down a bit, I might be able to get some heat from the fire. You got a name? Elfin, but everybody calls me Elf. Well, Elf, you share with me. Ain't never had anyone to share with, but I'm happy to share with a little feller like you. Name's Andley. Elf took the thumb of Handley's extended hand and shook it vigorously in his little paws. Oh, thank you, sire. You are very, very kind. Handley invited Elf to sit by the fire on the old blanket he kept for sleeping on. Elf was soon dry and began sharing stories about what it was like to be a squirrel. Handley listened intently, enjoying the perspective from a higher up viewpoint than his own, climbing trees and moving fast up there. That sounded fun. What about you, Handley? I don't know much about trolls. I know you like bridges, but what do you do? Did you lose your family too? Handley shook his big head slowly. Us trolls, solitary. When one dies, a new one rises up in its place takes a long time. Handley heard footsteps approaching the bridge. Trolls have good hearing, 
but the crunchy snow made it way louder than normal. He held a finger up to his rubbery lips and Elf put his little paw over his mouth. Handley tipped his head for just a moment. It's okay, coming from village, it's safe, Handley said. How old are you? Elf said, resuming the conversation. Handley, Handley, are you down here? He recognised the voice immediately. It was hard not to. That sing-song tone was unique. He poked his head out from under the arch of the bridge to see Ethel teetering her way down the banking, laden with paper bags that looked like they would burst open. Handley extended his rangy arm just in time, preventing Ethel from the same landing as Elf. Oh, thank you. I didn't realise that embankment was so steep or the snow so deep. Ethel was blushing, but smiling too. Why are you here? Handley questioned. Holding up the bags, Ethel explained to seeing Handley, staring at the lights in the village earlier. He's lonely, piped up Elf. Yes, well, I thought that might be the case, so I brought you some things to cheer you up. I thought you might want some company, but I see you already have that. She nodded towards Elf. Why you be so nice to Handley? Cold, uncomfortable for humans. Better in the village? With good foodie food smells and fires and singing. Well, I brought these. Ethel tipped out the first bag. It was full of fairy lights. She popped some batteries in and pressed the switch. Beautiful colours twinkled, reflecting off the water and the underside of the bridge. Elf squealed. Woo, pretty! Grabbing the end of the wire, he scurried up the side of the bridge and hung the string of lights over a stone that jutted out from the bridge. That's the spirit, little one, she smiled. Next out of the bag came huge fluffy blankets, big enough to wrap round Ethel twice. The fanciest food Handley had ever seen followed. Huge ham joints, little plastic containers of greens with spicy smells, roasted nuts, little elf's eyes lit up. Tubs of sweet, cold, white stuff. Handley thought it was creamed ice. The Ethel plunged into the snow. And finally, a square box wrapped in dark green paper and a light blue bow. Handley was speechless. I hated seeing you so sad. I wanted to cheer you up. I thought you looked lonely and maybe a little bit of Christmas spirit might lift you up a bit. Handley's mouth was hanging open. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to intrude and I didn't realise you already had company. I I'll just leave this here and- No, 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 Handley shouted, causing Ethel and Elf to jump. I'm sorry, Handley. I know you like being on your own. You want to stay? Really? With Handley and Elf? Well, I, I mean, I, I don't have a gift for the little one. She looked over as Elf waved her off, stuffing cashew nuts into his furry little cheek pouches. What about the smell? Handley know he no smell good to humans. Ethel raised a triumphant finger. I have a solution for that too. She placed a bright yellow clothes peg over her nose. See, I can't smell anything. Handley and Elf laughed and the three set about laying out their festive picnic although Elf really didn't need to be eating anything else. After several helpings, the unlikely trio settled down on the soft blankets. The fire had started to die down, so the colourful lights gave the bridge a magical feel. Would you like to open your gift, Handley? Ethel asked after explaining gift giving was something that humans like to do at Christmas. I suppose, yes. Ethel had picked the wrapping to match Handley's skin and eyes, but realised that that touch was probably lost on him. His big, clumsy hands eventually unfurled the ribbon and the paper fell away. Lifting the lid, Handley saw two items. The first was a small, flat card, coated in plastic. He lifted it carefully out of the box. It's a library card. Ethel had removed the peg, but had moved to the opposite side of the fire upwind from Handley. I spoke with the librarian and she agreed to give you a membership on the agreement that I am responsible for any water and um, fish damage to the books. Handley nodded slowly, taking in the information. He lifted out the other item, which looked like a big old-fashioned camera. It's a Polaroid. Looks like a camera. Well, it is, but it's a special kind. The photograph comes out here. She pointed to the slot on the front where you press the button. 
Want to try? Handley nodded, and after a quick demonstration from Ethel, the floor of the cave was soon littered with photos. They even managed to balance the camera, set a timer, and get Elf to jump on the button and scurry in time for a group photo. After the bustle and excitement died down, the trio reclined on the blankets, nursing full tummies, and beginning to get a little bit drowsy. Why you be so nice to Handley? The troll leant over to Ethel. Because everyone needs a friend, Handley. I know you're a good person, um, the troll. And seeing you invite little Elf in here without a thought just proves it. And good people deserve to be looked after. You bring the best fresh fish. You still protect the village even though you don't need to. Well, kinda do it. It's automatic, he shrugged. And you have a good soul. I didn't like seeing you look sad earlier today, and for as long as I'm around, you won't have to be lonely, okay? He won't be lonely anymore, Miss Ethel. I'll look after him. Elf's eyes closed as he trailed off. Ethel smiled, stood, and dusted off her coat. Well, I'd best be going before it gets late. She pulled a small torch from her pocket and clicked it on. Next time you're in the village, I'll take you to the library and you can meet the librarian. She's very knowledgeable, you know. You look after those lights now and come and trade me for batteries. Can't have them not working if I'm going to come and visit. She winked and turned and started to hike up the banking. Handley smiled, exposing a row of teeth that were barely in a row, and waved. When Ethel's boots had gone, he plonked himself down next to Elf's tiny snoozing body. One of the photos they had taken was still lying on the ground. He picked it up, no more than a postage stamp in his big hairy fist, and smiled his crooked smile. Three very different beaming faces looked back at him. Maybe being a troll wasn't so bad after all. <laughs> <laughs>